I speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. It is such a joy for Terry, my wife, and I to be with you here at uh, St. Luke's in Bartlesville. Um, and we are just overjoyed to be able to share this beautiful Sunday morning with you all. What a wonderful drive it was up to uh, Bartlesville this morning. Today's gospel is an interesting one, isn't it? Are you saved? In Paul's letter to the Philippians, he writes, Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is working you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. You know, some people get this little phrase a little mixed up. Uh, they, they tell you that uh, uh, your own salvation, you have to work to attain it. Some people would say that. Somehow as if Jesus' work on the cross was insignificant. But Paul, I think, is telling us that our relationship with God is much, much more. It's not just a passive baptismal ritual, and then you just go in living the way you used to live before, as if grace doesn't have the power to change you. Don't get me wrong, baptism is how you enter into the church. But there's so much more after that. Our relationship with God is not like an old heresy they called Pelagianism, which holds that humans have the will to achieve human perfection without God's grace at all. You see, salvation is not about what we do, but about what God's doing alongside of us and with us. Grace is the power of our relationship with God because it's a journey in which we participate in. We don't just passively receive it. We never take that journey alone because God is always with us in it. And driving down the road the other day in Oklahoma City, I saw, uh, I saw this car pass me that had one of those old-fashioned bumper stickers. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Remember those? You don't see those quite as often as you used to. But this one said, are you saved? You ever seen one of those? It's kind of like those gospel tracks you find under your windshield wiper when you go to Walmart. You know what I'm talking about? And, and I, when I read that, it, it's kind of interesting. It's, it's as if somebody's wanting to convert us, as if they've already attained what they need to attain, and they want you to attain it too. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? There's something intriguing about the words, are you saved? Over the centuries, a lot of theologians have kind of wrestled with this whole idea about salvation, about what it means to be in a state of grace, God's grace. Is it something that happens in a particular moment, or is it something that happens over a lifetime? Or is it both? It's interesting, isn't it? I imagine our dear brother Paul, from his theological perspective in the letter he wrote to the church in Philippi, would probably not have a bumper sticker on his camel that said, are you saved? His camel's bumper stick, sticker would say, are you being saved? You know they had bumper stickers on camels back then, right? Or at least that's what I like to believe. Salvation is past, present, and future. It's a transitory excursion with God. It's a journey with God over a lifetime. A journey in which we grow in a deeper commitment and love with Jesus Christ every single day. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever experienced love at first sight? Boy, I know I did. 22 years ago. She's sitting right there. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You know, you know, that first love is, you look at him and you go, that's the one. Always. But, you know, even in that particular moment of knowing that they're the one, the relationship is not fully formed yet, right? It just started. Many of us come to know our heart's desire gradually and over time. You know, she used to not like me. I always liked her, though. But love, love grows over time. It takes a lot of work sometimes, and we always don't get along. Well, not always. The growth of a deeper love for another person can begin in a moment. 
But that relationship, the more profound relationship, the more mysterious relationship, requires you to go through good times and hard times and happy times and arguments and trying to listen when you're not listening. That kind of relationship takes time. And our love and commitment to Jesus Christ is no different. It can begin in a moment. I know mine did. But it's got to grow over time. The invitation from the Spirit is both past, present, and future. Work going on inside of us. But it's work to which we're called to respond. Now, I want you to think for a minute. Can you imagine what a relationship of love would be like if it was only one-sided? I mean, think about it. What if he or she left you little love letters? What if he or she spontaneously embraced you when you least expected it? What if he or she whispered love into your ear? And despite all those little acts of love that the other is doing for you, you never respond once. You just walk around, like my daddy used to say, a bump on a lock. The other person is trying to love you, but you won't respond. Sounds like a one-sided relationship, doesn't it? It's unlikely that love would blossom for the other, would it, if you're not responding? It's a lifelong commitment. But you know something? The Spirit of God is actively working in each one of you leaving little love letters of the Spirit's work through Scripture for you to read. The Spirit is embracing you with peace when you least expect it in the midst of anxiety. The Spirit is whispering in your ear love through music. Maybe a sermon, I don't know. But the Spirit's trying to reach out to you to tell you how much you're being drawn into a love with Christ. And when we begin to recognize the Spirit's tug on our hearts that the Spirit's trying to invite us into, we're well on our way to a lifelong commitment with Christ that maybe have happened in a moment, but takes the whole lifetime to cultivate. Here's the thing we got to do. we got to respond. You know, in today's gospel reading, Jesus is teaching us about two sons who were invited to share in the work of their father in the vineyard. One acknowledged the invitation, but wouldn't go. The other refused to go, but later recanted and went out and worked in the vineyard. Now, here's the thing. This parable is not about how two sons need to operate so that they can win their father's love and favor. Y'all following me? The point here is that both children are invited to share in the father's work and in their father's abundance, and each responds to the invitation in different ways think that's us sometimes? I know it's me. I fail to respond in the way I should. We're called to respond with love for God. We're invited not out of fear or out of misguided motivation or even a desire to coerce God. We're called to respond because God loved us first. Some people try to win God's love or coerce God to love them. But that's not how it works. It's no strings attached. Don't you love that? Try to buy something on the internet today with no strings attached. It just doesn't happen, does it? There's always a catch, but not with God. Jesus says, I promise you everlasting life. See, this, this deepening of a, a love of Jesus Christ is something you gotta work out you got to participate in. It's right there for you. you just got to receive it. But sometimes receiving it means you got to do something. Open your arms wide open for God. All we got to do sometimes is just read the stories so you can hear God's love in the stories of other Christians. And go out there and tell the good news. Now, I'm not talking about gospel tracts on the street corner. That doesn't work. I'm just talking about live your daily life as a Christian in love with Jesus. Sisters and brothers, the invitation to live a life of discipleship is always before us. And the most important question that we should ask ourselves every single day is this. Am I growing in a deeper love and commitment to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? But I got a more simple question for you to ask yourself. 
Am I being saved? Amen.